Right, so we identified 10 feedback loops in this paper, which we can basically group into three categories. Uh, the first of all is those in the biosphere. If we start degrading the biosphere, and this could be amplified by climate change, then we might get um, emissions of, of carbon from boreal and tropical forests. We've already seen the wildfires that have happened this summer. That's emitting a lot of carbon dioxide. Uh, the second is if we melt a lot of snow and ice due to warming climate, then that will uh, lead to more absorption of radiation. And the third is emitting uh, carbon from some of the big stores such as permafrost, which could happen under a warming climate. Yeah, so essentially these positive feedback loops mean that whatever we do now, it's almost too too late essentially. Under the Paris Climate uh, Change Agreement, the agreement was made that uh, we would try and keep below the two degrees centigrade rise in temperature by the end of the century. Is that enough? Two degrees is right on the border. Uh, in the assessment that we make in this paper is that some of these tipping points will start to kick in right at the two degree level. Um, if we go past two degrees, then we risk triggering a cascade of these tipping points that could push us all the way to the hothouse earth. So Paris, uh, achieving the Paris Agreement is the minimum. Ideally, we, could, we should stick well below the two degrees recommended by Paris to avoid these, uh, these cascade of tipping points. And, and if, we, if we do take on board all of this, this warning, which does seem pretty dire, what can governments, what can humans do to try and avoid this? So the sorts of things that we have to do are already pretty well known. It's just a matter of, of making the will to do it. So things like um, decarbonising the economy so that we don't pump any more carbon into the atmosphere, things like uh, protecting the stores of carbon that we have in our forests already and possibly drawing down uh, more carbon through biosphere sequestration. Uh, and then also the sorts of societal changes like behavioural shifts, uh, technology shifts, shifts in the values in how we relate to the planet are what's needed to make all these transitions a lot easier. And I guess, of course, we should, uh, we should mention that this isn't conclusive evidence as yet, but it certainly paints a fairly uh, depressing picture. Dr Stephen Laid, thank you very much.